it takes a village. Everybody in town called me Mama Ella. To raise a child. I got 60 grand and 45 greats and 11 great greats. At 92, Ella Edwards' family tree is still growing. I have pictures everywhere. That over there is my daughter and her family. This is my daughter and her husband. Grandson, granddaughter, grandson. All of these are grand. You can feel the love inside her Lake Village home. Now come on up here, let me show you something else. But just a few blocks away. Ain't nothing down there but a bank and a drugstore. Empty storefronts with signs of what used to be. It ain't nothing in Lake Village no more. N nothing. If you don't go to church, <laughs> there ain't nothing else to do. Neglect. Years, decades of neglect. It's a narrative native Vincent Tolliver is familiar with, but five years ago, he stumbled across something in a book. Quite by accident. That blew him away. I was really insulted that I didn't learn about it growing up in my own hometown. I discovered that there was a massacre in Chico County. Like Tolliver, we found not many in Lake Village know either. And it's not being taught in school. Most of the students have no knowledge about what happened in 1871. I thought, wow, this story has got to come out. Tolliver is now absorbing everything he can about December of 1871 for a documentary. The Civil War had ended and slavery had been abolished. Lake Chico was lined with huge plantations and front and center, James Worthington Mason. He had political connections not only in Arkansas, but in the White House. Mason was a former slave, but the son of Elijah Worthington, Arkansas's wealthiest landowner. He was the first African-American postmaster and also served as a state senator and county sheriff. At the peak of Mason's political career, his best friend, Walthall Wynn, was murdered. What was fascinating to me about that is that a murder of a black man in a grocery store, John Saunders, a prominent white businessman, with his two uh, buddies, who were also white, that they were jailed. They, and that was not typically the case in the 1800s. What happened several days later would be the reverse of what we've come to know as racial violence in this country. Several hundred black people from across the county came into Lake Village, marched into Lake Village, uh, rode horseback into Lake Village, broke these three white men out of jail, took them to uh, a nearby woods and boom, 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 riddled them with bullets. The trouble in Chico County made headlines for weeks. This telegram appeared in the New York Times December 27, 1871. The Negroes here are most thoroughly excited and have taken possession of the situation. One article alleges that the Ku Klux Klan was responsible for Wynn's murder. Another reports buildings gone to decay, stock all gone, and almost every white woman in the county gone. There was cold-blooded murder happening, not whites killing blacks, but blacks killing whites in the county that also prompted the fleeing. Mason was arrested a year later for instigating the violence, but the case was dismissed. Is it possible some of your own ancestors participated in the massacre? Oh, absolutely it's possible. I just don't know. Tolliver hopes this hidden history won't be buried any longer. We have to be honest about where we are and how we got there. Yeah, I got a bunch of them. <laughs> While time flies, Edwards remembers the wise words of her mother. And she always told me you got to crawl before you walk. 